Coming up today, President Park and Hay is calling on lawmakers to swiftly pass a stimulus bill aimed at reinvigorating the economy. She also pledges to listen to public concerns over the deployment of a U.S. missile defense system. In a move that will drive a further diplomatic wedge between the neighbors, Japan again lays territorial claim over Korea's easternmost Dokdo Island. Plus, the Korean government suspends domestic sales of scores of Audi and Volkswagen models over the auto giant's emissions and fuel efficiency scandal. Stay tuned for these stories and more. Hello, it's noon on Tuesday, the 2nd of August. You're tuned in to our midday newscast here on Arirang TV. Thank you ever so much for joining us today. I'm Mark Broom. We are going to begin at the nation's top office. President Park Geun-hye is back at work after a week-long vacation. Speaking at a cabinet meeting this morning, the president laid out her thoughts on a range of current issues. For details, we turn to our presidential office correspondent Song ji -son who's on the line for us. So, ji -san, the president touched upon a variety of topics. What can you tell us? Mark, President Buck began by saying that the Korean economy is showing signs of recovery and continued to encourage Koreans to vacation in the country just as she did last week. Noting that Korea's growth in the second quarter exceeded expectations, expanding 3.2 percent from last year, President Buck said reviving the economy and boosting domestic demand remain her key initiatives for the second half of this year and likely for the remainder of her term. She also called on lawmakers to move forward with the government's fiscal stimulus proposal, saying a delay will not create jobs in a timely manner when a massive number of layoffs is in the forecast following the government's corporate restructuring drive. The president also voiced her support for the constitutional court's recent decision to rule the anti-graft law constitutional. But with growing concern that the act could have the effect of shrinking domestic demand, she asked her cabinet to create follow-up measures to cushion the impact. The new law limits the value of gifts that politicians, journalists, teachers and their spouses can receive with meals capped at 27 U.S. dollars each. President Buck also touched on the chosen location for the missile defense system THAAD. She stressed that Seoul and Washington's decision to deploy THAAD in southern Gyeongsangbuk-do province is aimed at public safety and said she will try to convince area residents with a focus on those grounds. She also vowed to sit down with the area governor and politicians to discuss the matter further. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, ji for that report. Now, Korea's defense ministry has called in Japanese embassy officials after Japan once again laid claim to the Korea-controlled islet of Dokdo in its annual defense review. The ministry said Tuesday that any attempt by Japan to contradict Korea's right to Dokdo will result in a strong protest and action to protect its territorial rights. This is the 12th straight year Japan has claimed the islets, which lie in the waters between the two nations. The document says the dispute over Dokdo has not been settled and contains a map labeling Dokdo as Takeshima, as it's known in Japan. A new report shows the number of North Koreans defecting to South Korea has shot up this year. It marks the first time the number has increased since the regime's leader Kim Jong-un came to power around four and a half years ago. For more on what might be leading the exodus, Connie Kim reports. Tough international sanctions on North Korea appear to be taking a toll on North Koreans, with more of them taking the ultimate risk and fleeing to the South. Seoul's Unification Ministry said Tuesday that more than 800 North Koreans entered the South in the first seven months of this year, up more than 15.5 percent from the same period last year. Prior to this, the number of defections had been on a continuous decline since Kim Jong-un took the reins in late 2011. What's also noteworthy is a significant increase in the number of well-off North Koreans working abroad. These workers, part of the North's middle class, are set to send up to 90 percent of their monthly income to North Korea. 
There is speculation the strongest U.N. sanctions adopted against the North following its nuclear missile provocations early this year have choked cash flows into Pyongyang and destabilized the regime. Just a few months ago, more than a dozen North Koreans working at a restaurant in China defected en masse to South Korea in an unprecedented case. A ministry official said an increasing number of defectors are coming to seek a better life and escape the economic hardships in the north. More North Koreans are expected to arrive in the coming months as well. Experts forecast the number of North Koreans living in the south could exceed 30,000 by October. Connie Kim, IDN News. Now, the decision is out. South Korea's Environment Ministry has confirmed it's suspending sales of scores of Volkswagen and Audi models. The models in question were caught up in an escalating scandal involving false claims over emissions, fuel efficiency and noise levels. Our EG1 has been watching the developments for us and joins us on the line. So, G1, we were kind of expecting this, but it's still a huge step. Hi, Mark. That's right. We basically knew this was coming. But the decision was made official around 90 minutes ago. The environment, the environment Ministry nullified the certifications of 80 models imported here by Audi Volkswagen Korea. The cars can't be sold without the certifications, and the decision affects 83,000 cars in the country. After a final test, the Ministry took out two overlapping models and added three, the Audi A3, A8, and A8L. This comes after the ministry held a hearing last week where officials representing the automaker explained Volkswagen's position on the government's push to suspend sales. Although the German auto giant voluntarily suspended sales prior to the hearing, it denied any manipulation of emissions levels but acknowledged making errors on test documents. But after the final test, the ministry found the automaker guilty of fabricating test documents. The ministry says it will fine Audi Volkswagen Korea 16 million U.S. dollars. It also plans to recall an unspecified number of vehicles to be announced at a later date. So this really is a far-reaching decision that affects not only Volkswagen's uh, local unit, but tens of thousands of drivers here in Korea as well. What, do, what more do we know about these results? Well, the, docu uh, the, sorry, the government had already been moving to enforce a sales ban on the vehicles in question, including the Golf, Jetta, TDI, Audi A6, and other diesel and gasoline models, saying test documents for emissions and noise levels were forged in order to get the certification. The automaker is already seeing sales plunge in Korea. They fell more than 30% in the first half of this year compared to the same period last year and Audi Volkswagen Korea can't register new cars for sale, which will have an even bigger impact. And the Korean government isn't going to make it easy for the automaker to regain the certification either. It says it will conduct comprehensive tests on the cars when Volkswagen reapplies. Back to you, Mark. Now staying with the uh, economy-related news, Korea's consumer prices grew at the slowest pace in almost a year in July as low global oil prices continue to drag down on overall price growth. Statistics Korea says prices rose 0.7% last month from a year earlier, marking the lowest growth since September of last year when prices went up 0.6%. It also marks the third straight month that the inflation rate has remained in the 0% range. Lower petroleum product prices that fell nearly 9% on year was the main reason behind the sluggish inflation. The prices of agricultural products also pulled down overall prices by dropping 4%. Korea is falling behind the rest of the OECD in terms of the number of people finding work. On average, the OECD has seen employment rates rise gradually this year, but Korea appears to be at a standstill. Oh Seung has the details. For most OECD countries, employment rates have improved during the first three months of this year. However, according to a report by the Korea Institute of Public Finance, the only country that bucks that trend is Korea. Using OECD data, the report shows the average employment rate for member countries was 66.8% in the first quarter, 0.3 percentage points higher than the previous quarter. The Eurozone saw growth of 0.4 percentage points, reaching 65.1%. Figures for the UK and Canada edged up 0.1 percentage points respectively. The United States and Japan also improved by 0.4 percentage points. 
As for Korea, its rate of 65.9 percent, which falls below the OECD average, remained unchanged from the previous quarter. However, the latest numbers from Statistics Korea show employment is back on the growth path with improvements in June, rising 0.5 percentage points on year, hitting 67 percent. Still, there are concerns that the employment rate will take another tumble in the second half, as the fallout of corporate restructuring in Korea's ailing shipping industry hasn't been reflected. The employment rate for Gyeongsangnam-do province, Busan and Ulsan, Korea's major shipping ports, are believed to be on a downward trend, having fallen as much as 0.7 percentage points in June. Oh Soo-young, Arirang News. Now, responding to a request by the UN-backed government, the United States has launched airstrikes on the Islamic State militant group's stronghold in the Libyan city of Sirte. This marks the first time that American jets have directly come to the aid of the government forces currently fighting ISIS militants in the North African country. The Pentagon says the airstrikes on Monday, which were authorised by President Obama himself, hit ISIS vehicles and a tank, causing heavy losses. A spokesperson added that more US airstrikes will follow in order to make, quote, a decisive strategic advance against the extremist group. Staying uh, with the United States and the state of Florida has identified 10 more cases of Zika likely spread by local mosquitoes, bringing the total number of cases in that state to 14 now. Florida's governor says the state has asked the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention to send experts to help investigate and combat the outbreak. The CDC has since issued a travel warning to pregnant women or women thinking of becoming pregnant to avoid a small one square mile area north of downtown downtown Miami, where officials believe the active transmissions of Zika are occurring. However, the CDC director says there's nothing to suggest widespread transmission. Florida announced its first four cases of Zika last Friday in what could be the first sign the virus may be circulating locally. The number of Koreans heading on overseas vacations has increased sharply despite government efforts to encourage domestic travel and give the domestic economy a lift. The country's top two travel agencies, HANA Tour and Mode Tour Network, say the number of international travellers in July rose by about 40 40% from last year to more than 450,000. Experts say this is a result of a low base effect caused by the MERS outbreak last year. The most popular destinations were China, Japan and other East Asian countries, followed by the United States. However, the recent terror attacks in Europe brought the number of travellers to that region down by 15% during the same period. Korea's main gateway, Incheon International Airport, broke daily traffic records on Sunday when the number of travellers surpassed the 200,000 mark for the first time ever. Now, Korea's Tae-in Corporation Center held a unique cyber performances uh, with musicians from Vietnam and Hong Kong on Monday. The event was aimed at boosting efforts to connect various countries through cultural contents. Kim mok has more. With support from South Korean radio station Kugak FM and the Department of Traditional Korean Music at Seoul National University, Tain Cooperation Center on Monday held a joint cyber cultural performance with Hong Kong and Vietnam. The performance helps us narrow the gap between our neighbors and boost cooperation in order to promote more cultural exchanges. The performance was held during the 42nd Asia-Pacific Information Network meeting at the University of Hong Kong. The collaboration introduced Korean traditional instruments such as the Kayagum, Changgu and Hegum, Hong Kong's Guzang or the Chinese zither and Vietnam's string instrument Dan Bao. Musicians formed an ensemble through the cyber network and even enjoyed some impromptu performances together. If we continue to use the power of technology in our performances, I think various types of musical collaborations will be possible. This will also help to infinitely improve the quality of music worldwide. With the goal of connecting Asia and Europe by sharing cultural contents through a so-called ICT Silk Road, the Tain Network is seen as a base for international joint research projects on climate change, remote medical services and remote cultural performances. Kim Mogyan, Arirang News. 
Now we're going to take a look at the weather now because the steamy summer heat continues to have Korea well within its grips today. The daily low in Seoul, Daejeon and Gwangju started out at a steamy 26 degrees Celsius. Now the high in the capital Seoul will reach up to 32 degrees Celsius uh, in the middle of the day while most regions will also see the mercury rise well past 30 degrees C. Heat wave warnings do remain in place across uh, pretty much everywhere across the nation to so take the necessary precautions. There is a 60 to 70 percent chance of showers in inland areas and uh, the coast this afternoon so try and keep an umbrella handy. The regions including Seoul can expect up to 50 millimetres of rain and some strong winds. Well, that's all we have for now. I'm Mark Broom. Thank you, as always, for tuning in. We'll be back throughout the day with more newscasts. Our next scheduled bulletin coming up at 3 p.m. Korea time. So until then, goodbye.